Greetings and welcome back to Creative Briefing with me, Adam, from Influx Media Production. Creative Briefing is a live streamed ad hoc, um, sometimes, often, not quite daily, probably two, three times a week. I aim for it. It's a show that looks at creativity and what it means to be creative, um, trying to help fellow creatives explore maybe other avenues, um, sharing tips and tricks for common softwares that we all use, Photoshop, Illustrator, Premiere, those types of things, uh, plus also sketching, drawing, music, um, and maybe trying to encourage uh, non-creatives, if that's uh, such a term, uh, to maybe explore their own creativity. Um, Today I'm going to jump right back into Mew School where I left off on Friday. There are a couple of things that um, weren't working and it kind of bugged me. So uh, I want to go back and um, and take a look at uh, MIDI input which wasn't working and I sort of figured out there's a little strange little bug and I've got the Arturia key step again, plugged in the USB into the computer and um, we're going to um, show you how to get that working and why there might be a strange little, there's a specific sort of sequence of events that makes, you know, make, or stopping it from working um, on Friday. Also, uh, I kind of glossed over like a note selection with the keyboard, um, which is sort of quite useful when you're editing um, after you maybe inputted some notes um, and uh, I'll, I'll sort of go over real time and why real time isn't that great. Um, again, MuseScore is free and it's a really great program, um, but it doesn't really. I kind of, I kind of suggested that maybe it could replace a door, a digital audio workstation, but it, it really can't because it can't capture MIDI um, along with a metronome um, in real time. So I'm gonna sort of cover those few things. Um, that I sort of missed or weren't working on Friday. I want to sort of get right back into that while it's fresh in my mind and maybe while it's fresh in your mind if you saw that. If you didn't see that, um, there'll be a link somewhere around um, uh, going back to that so that you can you can uh, catch that show uh, that episode that sort of really digs into into Muse score. You know, in, in a basic way, it's a very deep program, as I said on Friday, so it, it can do a lot. So uh, I, I don't get too far into the weeds, but I do sort of give it a good, a good going over in a, in a sort of generalistic terms. If you missed that, do do catch up. But for um, for now, let's um, let's have a look at new school. Here's something I was sort of playing with earlier, but I'm gonna um, delete all of this. And first thing I want to talk about is um, the MIDI, which wasn't working. Now, if I go to my preferences in the I.O. section, um, there is MIDI input, and I'm not going to mess with this. Uh, well, let's see, it wasn't even selected, and this has been working just fine. Let me, uh, it's going to break again. Oh, there we go. So as long as the MIDI device, your MIDI controller, is selected in that um, in that preference, although why it was blank when I first launched it because it it was working just fine. Um, and then this this MIDI icon here needs to be toggled. Now on Friday when I was trying to demonstrate this, it wasn't wasn't working. Um, but after the show when I was playing around, if I toggled the uh, this button up here, if I toggled that off and toggled it back on, that kind of booted the core MIDI um, framework or booted MuseScore's implementation of MIDI into action and all of a sudden it was working again. So if you're trying to hook up a MIDI controller to MuseScore and it's not working like it was for myself on Friday, everything selected in the preferences and everything at face value looks right, just try toggling the MIDI um, input off and then toggling it back off, back on again. And um, I would say maybe if you're not using MIDI, then toggle that, keep it off, and only put MIDI on when you need it. Because maybe behind the scenes that's confusing issues. So now obviously. And again, I'm not a 
pianist or a keyboardist by any stretch. I just know how to make the sounds very, very, very basically. So um, this is obviously working. Now I can use my keyboard here to input notes. So if I hit N for note input, and I'm going to go back just to the regular um, step time input, I can then um, just say let's add a little, uh, and I'm on, I'm going to hit five, I'm on quarter notes. Let's undo that. I can go back, while I'm still in recording mode, while I'm in, you know, no input, I can go back and delete will undo the last action. And as you can see, I, I inadvertently hit two notes there and I can backspace to, to undo that, which is quite handy. Um, these little mini keys, it's not a full size keyboard, these little mini keys, they're, they're dreadful. It's like the curse of Satan. I mean, they, they're great because they're compact and the, the key step packs a lot of features in it and a small footprint, but they're for an incompetent buffoon like myself, um, I do prefer a full-size keyboard. It just means I, I there's a little more margin for error. With, there's no margin for error with the key your finger placement here. So that's just an aside. So um, when you have an incompetent buffoon like myself at the, at the keys, um, it's good to be able to go back and undo and then re-edit your notes while you're still. Um, let me go back and enter another note there. And then I'm going to switch to eighth notes by hitting four and then back to quarter notes. I have no idea what I've just inputted there. It's just some little run in the C major scale. And let's rewind. So It's not going to win any Grammys for sure, but um, demonstrate that you, it's inputting with the keys. If you're a keyboardist, if you're more familiar with, you know, chord structure and shapes on the on the keys, then that's going to be a lot easier for you. Uh, feel more natural than you know, clicking and picking on the on the mouse and, and the computer keyboard. Just another good option. So let's look at maybe um, let's delete this stuff and go back to the beginning and let's see what it can do as far as uh, with step input um, inserting chords. Now obviously I can actually hit N for no input. And you notice there it played each note. It didn't really play a chord. It's more like a strum. Do -do -do. And um, let's do that again. And let's switch to eighth notes. And let's turn off hit N again to turn off note input and then hit R to repeat that four times and then let's see what it sounds like. So it plays back but when you input the notes you, you could hear that it inputs the notes one at a time. It doesn't really matter which order they they are, uh, you know, put in. If I just delete everything and demonstrate that again, I'm going to go hit N for note input, and I'm going to hit this. Um, what is this? F F major. Do do do. It doesn't really matter which. In fact, if I play the next chord. I can enter one note. You see, one note has been drawn on the on the um, staff there. As long as this keys continue to be held down, I can build up, you know, some more complex chords one note at a time without having to really sort of to, to think. I can then sort of um, compose rather than perform, which is uh, you know quite nice. Sounds hit repeat, R, 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 and let's go back to the beginning. Oh, lovely. Some, some 
lovely dissonant jazz. <laughs> uh, anyway, so just demonstrating the ways to build up um, more complex chords without having to really worry about getting them accurate all in one go. As long as one key is held down, you can add chords to to that. So, um, well, I want to come back to ties in a second, ways to tie those chords together. Um, or tie common notes within those chords together. Um, we looked at real time, which obviously you can only really do real time. There is actually, I mean, you can, piano keyboard, you can do real time and then and it's going to input those notes in real time. But as you can see, it didn't do a great job. This is where I have to correct what I said on Friday about um, new score maybe being able to replace uh, a digital audio workstation where it really can't. It can't capture MIDI input in real time. It can't capture anything in real time um, to any consistent degree. So just be aware of that caveat that um, it's a great composition tool, but it's not really a performance tool. I'm not sure where the where the where the sort of problem lies, but um, I mean, if I turn N again, select all and delete. Let's go back to the beginning, um, and I'm going to hit N to enter real time note. I'm going to try it on the on the keyboard this time. And I'm going to close this virtual keyboard they have. Just wanted to show you that that's there. That's kind of if you don't have a MIDI keyboard, you can maybe. Um, build up your notes or your chords or your melodies by, by using that as a reference. Um, so let's, if you listen out, as soon as I, as soon as I hit a note and it starts recording, you're going to hear there's a metronome, tick, 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 but oh, I'll come back to that in a moment. Just be, just listen out for that as I start playing. <laughs> So let's hit N to stop recording. Let's go back and listen to that. As you can see, that wasn't what I played. It didn't capture what I played. Um, let's try again. I mean, because user error is obviously a, a possibility, especially with... Uh, a buffoon like myself at the at the helm here, but let's uh, let's just try again. See if the if um, I'm gonna have a quick rehearsal. Whoops. So the thing, the thing to notice is there's the, the chords are sustained and then two notes play over the sustained, the sustained chords. Now, a MIDI sequencing program like Logic or Cubase will handle that with ease. You know, it's been doing that since like 1984. It's, it's just kind of like the most basic function it can do. For whatever reason, new score can't handle that. And again, let's listen for the metronome and you'll notice that I mean, the whole concept of a metronome is that it's on a grid and it's there to, for a reference for the performer to hit that, you know, to sort of self quantize. Familiar with what quantizing and quantizing is a, you know, uh, a computer function that will move notes exactly onto the, to the beat or divisions thereof. Now the metronome is going to, should be, perfectly quantized to the beat and it's a guideline it's a click track for myself to you know for the performer to listen to and uh you know make sure their timing's right for whatever reason the metronome in new score is wonky so let's take a listen to that again oh 
Oh, sure, I didn't. That, that was my rehearsal, actually. I meant to do that. Right, let's hit end to start recording and try again. <laughs> As you could hear, that metronome was all over the place. It wasn't a metronome, it was just an annoying click in the background. It didn't help me, it threw off my timing rather than helped it. Um, and I think you can turn off the metronome, but, the, but without the metronome, how do I know what the tempo is? How do I know how to make four notes in a bar? Utterly ridiculous, terrible. Now, I can hit um, a keystroke function return or if I hit N first and then hit function return now it's giving me a click track but all it's doing is inserting rests so now I've got to okay now I've got to quickly and once again the timing goes all wonky so let's go back to the beginning and see if it was able to capture what I input. It's not even close, is it? It's not even close. So, quite frustrating that really that if you, if you are a performer and if that's more natural to you, I mean, it's not a huge deal breaker for myself because, as, as you've just witnessed, I'm not much of a performer. Um, I can rehearse things and I, I can put phrases down, um, and then that helps me to see, oh, that's what that looks like written. What I've just kind of learned to play on the on the keys, um, which is why MuseScore is a is a great uh, learning device. But when it can't really capture the input, it's a, that's that's a bit um, problematic. So. Be aware of that as a, as, a, as a caveat, that it isn't the greatest um, live performance tool for, for recording what you're playing. It might be easier, and again, this is, um, if you are a performer and you, you may already have um, some MIDI software, uh, you can record your MIDI in another software and import the MIDI into this, and that will then lay out your score. That might be the, the, uh, the best way to go. Um, another thing to, to be aware of with um, the live, the what do they call it, real-time, real-time automatic is what it's called. Um, and I'll dip into real-time manual real quick in a second. I'm not sure how it's real-time, but I'll, I'll get to that. But real-time automatic, um, up here, this decides what the smallest note will be. So if I say go to 16th notes, and let's try recording something. Um, the smallest note will be a 16th note. And you can see it's gonna start stacking 16th notes. As long as you hold them down, you'll see that it starts tying them together. But it's very messy. It's not very intuitive. It's not. It's very messy. You would never write music that had tied sixteenth notes in place of, you know, two quarter notes or a half note. It, it's just, it's very messy, very cluttered, and probably sort of confusing to read. So, um, so another sort of limitation with real-time transposing. Um, so, um, not transposing, but uh, transcribing, I should say. So, um, let's select all of that, delete that, and let's look at ways to make it a bit more useful. So, real-time manual. Mm. 
again, if I keep this note held down, it will it will build a chord, but unless I press the arrow key to advance, you see it, that chord goes away. Unless, this is the manual read real time, um, so it's not really real time, so that's a bit of a poor labeling. I have to hit the arrow key to go to the next note, and now I can, you know, release the keys and I can change my, you know, my key durations, my note durations, hit four to go to eighth notes. Oh, so I have to hit the arrow key. And then hit a rest. And then we can see how that. So a little less intuitive, not at all useful having to, you know, manually advance the timeline. Um, if you're going to do that, you may as well just go back into step time, which is just a, a lot more easy to comprehend. So let's look at um, delete everything and let's go back to um, to step step input and see if I can sort of create that. So I'm going to hit N to and it's going to hit my And what I will do, because we're on quarter notes, I'm just going to Actually, let's undo that last one and make that a whole note. So we go to three. Maybe it's seven. Yes. So let's take a, a, a listen. Um, where am I going here? Okay. Um, hit N to turn off note input. So I know that these chords should be sustained. And actually, by rights, if I select this note here, let me just do that again. So I'm just clicking with the mouse and then shift up and it's going to select the whole note. If I then hit six, it's going to change that to a half note. And I know that, whoops, shift up, not up, hit six. And now I'm hitting the, the, uh, the arrow key. So what I forgot to mention on Friday, you can navigate each note or chord in the in the composition with the left right arrows and then obviously up and down changes the pitch of them uh, or shift up and down will select them and as we saw also I did demonstrate command up and down will change the uh, the string in the in the tab um, if we were doing like guitar based um, scores notation so I have to and shift up there and hit Let's see how, actually, maybe that, no, no, I did have that. No, let's leave that. I think that was uh, the end bit. So I'm going to rewind and... So I'm going to delete that. That's an errant note right there. Um, so it's coming along, but what I want to do is select these notes and I want to tie them. And that's what this little icon, this button up here does. If I click this now, again, Muse Score, I have selected the notes I wanted tied, but Muse Score has looked at every note on that line and said, I'm gonna tie them all together. And that's not what we want because it's not going to sound very good. That's close, but it's not what we want. So we need to go through and edit these ties uh, delete the ties that we don't want. We can just select the tie lines 
and then delete them. Now the cord is tied and I can select and I can shift left and right and I can hit the tie and is there a shortcut for the tie? It's plus. And again it's gonna uh, kind of waste our time a little bit. Uh, there may be some rules that help us not have to waste a lot of time here. Uh -huh. I can shift select that and do plus and it's on the on the keypad here on the numeric keypad select those ties again and now the chords are tied but the sort of two notes I'm playing up here play over the sort of sustained chord now let's see I, um, I believe if I just select this note and hit plus it will just do that note okay let me see if I shift click that and just do plus yes it's going to tie that which I don't want Let's select that note, shift up and hit plus and it's tied. And that's exactly what I want. Um, it was smart enough to tie the three notes together. So let's... So that gave me exactly what I want. In a far more manageable way than like uh, real-time manual or real-time advanced uh, automatic um, weren't able to do so like I said it take for someone like myself that doesn't read music and hear it in my head like you know Beethoven or Mozart would do I mean um, or any more contemporary musician from today because, of course, no one from the 21st century can read music like uh, Beethoven or Mozart could. What a ridiculous thing to say. Anyway, you know, you get my drift. Uh, someone who's more classically trained, someone who can uh, really sight read and hear the music, um, it might be a, a lot more, they might be a lot more proficient. They will be a lot more proficient in being able to go through and input the notes. You can select notes from the, from the, from the keypad, you know, to select your half notes, quarter notes, eighth notes, whatever you need to do, and uh, very quickly go through and input the chords on the, on the, on the MIDI controller, and then go back manually and edit it using the uh, left, right, up and down arrow keys, uh, plus, key for adding a tie and uh, very quickly you've built up your your composition so let's where's my bar lines i'm going to add in that there and let's give it one more listen That's pretty much it. So hopefully um, that helped. Maybe it cleared up some things that were in um, in the. Let me see where we're we going. In the um, last video I did on Muse Score, um, I'm glad I figured out the, the MIDI thing because, as you can see from today's lesson, that it was it's it's really useful and it's really handy to have like a keyboard controller uh, in front of you. Um, and while MuseScore is great and for free it's really handy as a teaching aid and as a learning aid, it's uh, not a great performance tool. It's not going to record, you can't really record yourself. Um, so I hope you learned something from this. Um, this was nice and brief. Uh, probably better to break up the two lessons you know the new score coverage into two lessons i think um was able to uh, cover these things a little bit better than shoehorn them into the the, uh, uh, the last lesson so that worked out well uh hope you enjoyed it hope you learned if you do if you did you feel like you got something consider subscribing and hitting the bell so you get uh notifications like i say two three times a week i will try and do these and you know um every time i do you'll get a notification you don't want to be left out do you 
Um, so if you like this, uh, like, subscribe, share with your friends, and uh, most importantly, be creative, have fun, and I will see you on the next one. Cheers. Thanks for watching.